Swimsuit Katone and I actually have something in common, which is that we're both bad swimmers. Now, she chooses to combat that by wearing a flotation device. I, on the other hand, I just make excuses by the water, you know, but don't actually go in. Yeah, no, I'm, gonna, I'm coming. I'm coming. I just, uh, I ate a few hot dogs. I'm going to wait maybe like an hour or two. We got the summer units, finally. Now, we didn't really want them any earlier than EX jobs because they did get outdated. So I'm pretty stoked that they're here now with their EX job enhancements. And EX job upgrades can really make a big difference in bringing an older unit uh, back into relevancy, uh, although the newest units seem to be the best. So uh, we got two summer units. We have a very, very healthy amount of time to build them. I think Gumi did listen to what people were uh, asking for with these types of banners. And there is a third summer unit that's missing. That's the swimsuit Kilfay. And I'm thinking that maybe she's coming later uh, because again, uh, Gumi was listening and saying, oh, three limited units is too much on one banner. Let's split them up. Uh, that's just a, a hypothesis I have. I don't know if that's how it's gonna work out because they also did give us such a long time till the day after my birthday. So really a uh, super long time to uh, to build these units. So, I mean, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if they had released all three at once, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Swimsuit Katone who just came out with her EX in Japan. So luckily we have access to that information. Now, if you didn't know, she is a main job Kododama wielder, we can see down here, uh, and that she is an 80 cost you are sub rune knight sub ninja uh, which is kind of interesting that she gets the mobility of ninja and the extra attack type that's still magic scaling from rune knight uh, but we just got a kododama wielder so the question is is she going to be better or you know comparable to more and if she isn't then that's kind of a problem now her element does help her out a bit and that we do have lots of fire support uh, and that fire is going to be fine to try to use against lightning in the future uh, when cloud and charlotte and you know, these lightning teams come in where more is going to have a little bit of a harder time in that same position. So these Kododama wielders, they use maces, uh, they have hat, cloth, accessory, all that basic stuff. Now we'll, we'll also take a look at her TMR, which I really like. Like I almost want to grab her and build her to 99 and just take the TMR and, and get out of there because it's, it's pretty awesome. It's an accessory um, and this accessory gives you a little bit of spirit, a little bit, a bit, a bit of accuracy. Uh, but the most important thing here is it has a two cast TMR skill. Uh, and it's arranged. So when we take a look at this, it's a ranged AOE. So this is like the Mont TMR that you know we used to use back when we couldn't turn off skills to correct people's AI. So this is really handy still for a lot of units just to have this type of AOE. Uh, but then the effect here, increase missile resist 15% for three turns for allies. That is a very, very powerful effect. Uh, nullify silence, charm, and immobilize. So silence is going to be massive for any of your casting teams, uh, especially in PvE content where bosses or enemies might use silence. Uh, and then charm is going to be just fantastic for auto or sorry for <laughs> for live PvP. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. The new CM map was just announced and by new I mean old because they used the same one uh, and it was the one where people were camping with sniping units and this is going to be really handy for two reasons. One to get that missile resist but two to cross the map and not worry about like you know some errant Zazan that's going to come and charm you. So this looks really good. Now for the master ability uh, it's it's fine so single target resistance is very nice to have that like blanket resist 10% basically for you know for anything that's your single target attack however we have tons of AoEs right now that she could be caught in so you definitely don't want her to get too close she also gets a little bit of spirit now the thing that is not so great here and I don't know if the global versions are getting upgraded or not but the fact that there is no um, you know fire amp here that's kind of a big deal there's no 10% to fire uh, HP and then the the, the uh, fire attack and stuff like that's kind of sad not to see here and then the other thing is that there's no penetration here in terms of magic resist um, there's we know that she'll get a little bit of spirit penetration from both of uh, you know her jobs her rune knight and from her kodama wielder but we're missing some stuff here that more does have uh, that kind of gives her an edge up already all right so we should check out Katone's stats and kind of see how they are looking there's not 
really anything remarkable to talk about here. Her AP is that half AP starting amount. It's very low for a lot of casters. So it's something that you'll have to take into account that she's going to run out of AP a lot more easily than, you know, say uh, your Helena or, you know, Luel, whoever. And then otherwise, you know, her agility is fine. Like the rest of her stats look okay. She gets some spirit on her kit. However, her magic stat does look low, and this will be concerning to a lot of you. However, there's going to be a lot of things in her kit that can mitigate this, or, you know, they, they can boost her magic, they can give her some fire attack. So we can't get, uh, you know, too worried about a low magic stat just yet, but it is a pretty noticeable decline from where Moore is, uh, and then Moore also does have that innate water attack up from her master ability. Now let's quickly talk about the difference between 115 and 120 for Summer Catone. So when you go to 120, you are going to get what I would consider to be some significant stats. So the first being that you will get 30 extra magic. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but for Katone, who has a lower max magic stat, that is something that could be significant. The other one is going to be that AP increase from 74 to 85. That's an increase of 11. That's also a big deal considering that she has low AP to begin with. Otherwise, she doesn't get any agility. Like the HP is not a huge difference. Um, so the other thing we have to think about is the 120 skill. Now, I actually don't think the 120 skill is that good. So it means that Katone could be a 115 candidate during her event and then maybe a barracks unit after that uh, or like a slow build, however you want to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think that, you know, at least that AP is worth considering just because her AP is so low to begin with. Summer Katone is gonna have that, that natural ice resist and then of course she'll be weak to water. When we take a look at her resistances for her specific damage types, 15% is a really good spot for slash to start at. Like you can see yourself building pretty high in terms of total slash resist. Now that's not as big a deal as it used to be because there are slash resist penetrations. You need to have kind of a full kit of, you know, having some good HP, defense, barriers, whatever, you know, you're expecting to face in the meta, but having a high slash resist is just not bad. Uh, and then the rest of her resists are pretty unremarkable, except for magic resist is 10%, and she can stack that a little bit higher if she needs to. However, she's not going to be able to go full anti-magic like Moore can. Moore can stack a lot of magic resist. She has base 20 and then has two passives and, you know, all of her other stuff that she has going on for that. Uh, but that's fine. Like, that's that's the two most important resists. Katone has positive in, so that's always good. She also has has a disable stop and confusion resist the confusion is the 10 percent those are fantastic resists to have those are really good uh, for any type of gameplay mode those are some of the strongest fast ailments so seeing that is a very big positive for her let's zip through katone's kit here and see if there's anything worth talking about she gets her you know magic boost here and then fire attack up 25 this is from the rune knight sub and this is good this is something that will help mitigate having that lower magic stat uh, this increase spirit 12 uh, and then the ice resistant 12 percent this is what i thought was the magic resist I, I got a little bit confused about what the kododama wielder gets and then you have shadow runner from the uh, the ninja sub and this is really good being able to stack agility that's always a good thing we also have our spirit penetration from our rune knight sub here and that gives you a little bit of accuracy as well this is very matchup dependent this can be a really big deal in pve when you have enemies with super high spirit stats uh, this can actually just help you deal damage to them anyway and then in the uh, in pvp it's not as applicable but it does help especially against magic tanks magic tanks like rain that can stack a bunch of spirit then we have our our uh, shikuchi which is your move up and your jump up and that is just such a good thing to have uh, on your kit just just to have access to that now you don't necessarily want her to have this because you don't want her to get too far ahead of herself uh, but it's kind of nice because a lot of you are know that when you use yuna or you sack or whatever and they waste that turn using uh, their move up skill from their Kurodama sub. Uh, this just mitigates that. You don't have to use that skill anymore. She can use her other buffs and she has some really good buffs and it will enable her to, uh, you know, if, if she does hang back, uh, then it will enable her to get into the fray a little bit more quickly. So this is definitely something that you'll have to test with. It's going to be map dependent, matchup dependent, uh, but definitely a very powerful skill. Then we have the counter skills and we can see here the first upgrade that Katone's going to get from her 
EX. So she has the all damage reduction and that proc chance is going to go from 20% right here down to, I'm sorry, up to 30%, uh, which is really good. Like that's not insignificant. That's a really big boost. It's not a very glamorous upgrade though. And I have a hard time believing that she's going to be surviving all types of damage anyway with this buff. Uh, although if you do stack a lot of slash resist, this could be a very important part of her surviving maybe a slash attack or two, uh, enabling her to be in the fight longer, which is a big deal. Now, if you're fighting a lot of magic units and you have stacked some magic resist, then you do have this counter that gives you some AP uh, and it's actually very good for her. The, the thing is that it's only going to counter magic damage, so it's a little bit niche that way. And then we have the Poison Mist counter. It's it's not something that I would count on her using because, again, she might not survive uh, very long anyway. We'll take a look at her main job buffs, or sorry, her main job's just skills right now, and we have our 100% hit chance. These are all casting time skills. Uh, we have our move up. We have our magic damage barrier. Now, this is what more got upgraded. It's still really good for, for uh, Summer Katone, and if you're up against magic units that don't have a barrier break then this is really good to pair with that AP increase counter you have your huge uh, AOE slash big damaging skill and then we also have our big buff here that gives you some magic attack up some spirit penetration and now with the EX jobs it's going to give you slash resist 25% for all of your allies. This is very powerful to be able to give slash resist. Uh, it means that if she gets this off at the beginning of a fight, that not only will she have now a 35% slash resist plus whatever else you have. If you have Solidus, she's already at 55 plus gear. Uh, like you can seriously get some slash resist on Summer Katone. And if you're up against the slash meta, that's a really big deal. And your other units, you could compensate for having lower slash resists, or you could just empower your tank to take a ton of slash damage. And again, we do have slash resist penetration now. So that is something that we have to worry about. But at the, at the end of the day, this is a very powerful buff and a really good EX upgrade. Definitely something that makes her worth considering. Finally, she gets a new skill that I'm very interested in. So this is a skill that has, she gets three uses, it's 32 AP. It has a, a medium mod, uh, which is the biggest concern I have, but take a look over here. What do we see? There's no casting time. That's a big deal. This is one of her only no casting time skills that she's going to have access to. And this is going to be a new type of break. It's going to break slash and magic attack by 40% for three turns for targets. We can see it's got an okay range and an AOE. This is all really good. So this skill, the biggest problem I have with it is its potency in that I wonder when she's going to use it. Now, something that has a lower potency but has spirit penetration, uh, resist penetration, whatever that is, it, those skills get used even with a lower potency because they're going to do more damage. This doesn't actually empower the damage that it does, so if she has the chance to use a more powerful attack on auto, she'll probably use that in, instead of this attack. Now, she'll use this attack for sure because it has an instant cast. There'll be times where she can't get her other casts off and she's going to use this then and that's good um so i'm really curious i'm really curious if this is going to be something that will make a big difference you know the fact that it's an aoe if it hits like a Dwayne and a helena that will then power each of them down that like, that could be pretty crazy maybe they they're not going to one shot if she goes first for whatever reason she can get this off then you could maybe win a matchup that way but it's really hard to take a chance on it when she's limited and and you know you're not really sure which means that you can wait because we're going to have this huge chance, like this huge long period to build her. Uh, you don't have to pull for her right away. Uh, you can wait to see how other people uh, review her once they see this skill in action. Now we can take a look at the sub Kotodama wielder and it's it's just, it's fine. Uh, you do get your access to another instant cast. However, it's your step in magic that gets you really close to your opponent, which is not necessarily where you want to be. Uh, and then otherwise you have another strong skill that gives you your chance to stun a target. Uh, and this is definitely very powerful. Looking at the Rune Knight sub, this is actually really interesting. So we have the Drain Evocation, which has your jamming thrust range. It's a magic attack, so it, it gets boosted from any of your magic attack boosting skills, and it gives her a 100% magic buff. So if she uses this, 
she's going to be stronger than more like that's that's a fact and she's also going to have this slash resist penetration which will set up her other skills now she only has this uh you know this fire blade here that is she has to be really close to use however she also gets the hazard um slash magic version which is very very strong at 225 percent potency it consumes a bit of her hp whatever that's fine because this is going to be a big time damage dealer it does a different type of damage than her main kit it gives some slash or attack which will be great so if you're going up against a comp that has lots of magic resist then uh, the summer katone is going to be able to just whack people with this and deal a bunch of damage now yes people are building magic and slash resist but it's still good to have both uh, access and if she uses that drain evocation first then this is going to be really 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 strong uh, and definitely in pve uh, Katone's going to be a unit that's going to get you through tower stages. She's going to get you through uh, any like high challenge quests by being able to, you know, um, beat these units, these enemies that have these huge uh, defensive um, stats that we see uh, when they want you to use a specific unit. Uh, that's what I love about Howlett. Howlett's been able to get me through uh, stages where they're like, you need to have this other unit. And Howlett's like, no, it's fine. I can just do this on my own uh, because I have all of this power and penetration and, and different things that I can do. Now, uh, we also get Hazard Spell. If you're going to go for like a pure damage build, then getting a 50% magic boost is also something that's very, very powerful for her for three turns. And again, is going to be able to get her up, up and above more. Uh, if she uses this, and then she also uses her magic attack skill, like she could get some serious damage um, from her skills. And if you might have to turn off, um, you know, some other things like her self move and jump so that you can make sure she uses her hazard spell and then her um, magic attack up, her slash resist up, all that kind of stuff. But the other thing I wanted to talk about was this drain evocation that because it has this range, it means that she's going to use it. This will be a skill, you know, it's instant cast uh, that she's going to use a lot of the time on approaching enemies. So the fact that she'll come up, they'll, she'll be able to use this right away and then jump in and use her Kodadama skills or this hazard slash, I think that that her low magic is kind of a misleading stat. I, I think that people shouldn't read uh, too much into it because the Runite sub is going to be where it's at. Finally, we have the Ninja sub. Now, this is something that I don't think you're really going to equip, although you might for a few reasons. Uh, the decreased chance of being targeted is hide. Uh, that could be something that, that might see some use uh, with some testing, but really, I don't think it's better than Runite. And then you also have uh, the Decider of Fate, which is your increased accuracy by 60%. This is a live PvP. Uh, evasion tech that you might do um, but at the end of the day I don't know I, I don't think that this is a sub that you'll be using very often. Katone's LB looks pretty good at first glance we've got a AOE we have some range it's instant cast uh, and then it, it's got this ability to put people to sleep and that seems really good I, the thing that I'm worried about is that this LB will put the tank to sleep because you're gonna be targeting the tank and then your other units are just gonna wake that tank up now that might not always be the case the tank might be stacked with a healer or other units and you can hit multiple units um, but then your AOEs might wake up those units anyway so there, there's definitely it's, it's a status ailment that's easier to dispel and, that, and that's kind of a big deal However, we don't have to think about it just from that perspective. This could be used in live PvP or in manual play to great effect. And I think that would be pretty cool. I think even in auto play, it could still be good because if you sleep somebody and then they go next, then they're missing a turn even if your unit wakes them up. If you get them to skip one turn, then it's just as good as stun was. Uh, so I think that it's still going to be good. It's just not the strongest status effect that you would see on a limit burst. We also have to be concerned about the AP cost at 58, that it's kind of just going to bleed her dry and her AP is already pretty low. So if you're using this, then you might want bells uh, to make the, you know, the most out of a long battle with Katone. Let's do a quick comparison of Katone to Moore. And, and again, they're very comparable stat wise. The biggest thing is that Moore is about 50 points high in the magic category otherwise agility uh, you know like dexterity luck they both have high values uh, HP is very similar AP all that kind of stuff it's all it's all very similar what it comes down to is the are the kits and more just stacks you know all this anti-magic that's always gonna make her relevant when when magic uh, metas come to town she already has you know high magic and then the water attack from her master ability she has the magic resist penetration and her job level 
25 skill is frankly just a lot better than Catone's is. So when you take a look at them like that, uh, you have to think, okay, well, if you already have more, then don't pull for Catone. Uh, and if you're choosing between the two, then you might actually just wait for more to come to your account and slow build her instead. Uh, now, Catone has uses and she has a different element. So there's always a case uh, to be made for pulling her and for using her in all sorts of content. But if you're trying to be pragmatic, if you're trying to be, uh, you know, a good saver, then more is going to just come to you naturally. Eventually, you can maybe select ticket her or something. And that's just going to be a safe build that's non-limited. And I think most players can be very happy with that choice over getting Summer uh, Swimsuit Catone. Let's take a look at the pros and cons for building Summer Catone. So the slash resist buff is very strong. And I would love to see that used on Rain because not only are you giving him some slash resist up to tank with, then you're also going to be giving him magic attack up for his fire egg up. You can also take a look at him as a good just partner in general for Catone because he'll be able to maybe imperil fire with his LB and then she can deal more damage. But otherwise, Catone's pretty good with two different damage types, magic and slash. Now those are the common resists, but still uh, it's good to have that variable, variable uh, attack type. Uh, she also has the high spirit penetration, which I do think is niche. Like I don't think that's as powerful as defense penetration, but it's still good. Uh, Runeite sub is going to be able to just jack up her magic stat. And then if you take a look at her resist, like that 15% slash resist plus her skill, plus the single target she gets from her master ability, there's something there. Like she might actually be able to um, be very specifically built to be durable in certain matchups. It's going to take some work though. And then finally she gets the mobility from her ninja sub. Otherwise, for the cons, we can take a look at her 120 skill and ask, is this really going to be good enough? I'm just not sure. It's really hard to evaluate because we haven't seen something like that necessarily in the past. Uh, I think more is just going to be a safer build. I think more's kit's better uh, overall. And that if you're going to choose to build Catone, then maybe you should just be choosing to build more. And then otherwise, low AP, you know, uh, same kind of problems you might have had with more if you didn't like her kit, then you might not like that about Catone's as well. Uh, you know, most of her skills have cast in time. And and she didn't get as strong a 120 skill with no cast in time as more did so really when she's limited and there's lots of good units coming up with ff7 with charlotte uh, it's going to be hard to to decide to pull on her right now but don't forget we have a lot of time to decide whether or not we should pull for her so just wait wait it out see how it goes see if people are using her to great effect there, there will be people that build her super quickly uh, but otherwise this is going to be a skip for me and i recommend that you do the same but if you disagree with me that's okay you can let me know in the comments on discord uh, and then we can chat about that otherwise i'm going to see you guys in the next video and if you don't mind you can subscribe to the channel to get a notification for when that comes out. All right, we'll see you all next time.